Hello, today I'm looking at a Monoprice 40 watt two port USB C wall charger. And if you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use, and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. So this being a dual port device, we're gonna see some, some things that are just a little bit different. So let's get it open. First thing we notice is this GAN on here. GAN technology. Nothing else in the box, just a power adapter. So there we can see what we got. We got PD, 20 watt, 20 watt, and a little LED. Because it didn't come with any kind of manual, we're gonna have to rely on this to tell us what it can do for output. So it looks like just five volts and nine volts. You can see that model number on there, 42620. You can see the UL safety listing up here with the Canada and the US. It's got the number on there. That's good. Six for efficiency. It doesn't actually say mono price anywhere on it. So it's essentially just an unbranded device. The packaging weighs 20 grams. The power adapter weighs 74 grams. So overall, the power adapter is not too bad. It's essentially two 20 watt power adapters glued together. So here's a single 20 watt adapter, the uh, Anchor Nano Pro, just as a comparison. And you can see it's, you know, it's, it's quite a bit bigger than two of these, I'd say, but you know, not a huge difference really. So essentially two power adapters in one. And like a lot of the 20 watt power adapters, this doesn't do all of the different output voltages. So we're gonna check that out and see what this thing can do. So I've said this before, and one of the things I'm always suspicious about is they say GAN tech on this, and well, I mean, it's really hard to see, but there is an extremely dim blue LED right there. And I'm always wary that this GAN is gallium nitride, is a gallium nitride arsenic LED being a blue LED. All right, so we got our device plugged in, and one of the first things I'm noticing is that the idle power consumption on this device is literally on the limit for the DOE 6 efficiency. So this says 6 for efficiency on it, and the limit that it can be at for up to 49 watts is 0 0.1 watts, and it's right on the line. So if you average this over time, it's going to be 0 0.100. So that's not great. This is actually really on the high side for power consumption. The power factor is very low, VA usage is kind of high, so what we're going to expect to see is that THD number be not the worst. And yeah, so the THD number is not terrible. This is a, a mild positive, but the power consumption being high at idle is a big negative. But let's check it out. Maybe it's really good at a lot of other things. Plugged in our first load over here, and we can see we got our five volts. Check the next mode. We got nine volts. And that seems to be it. So it's as advertised, five and nine. Let's check the other output. So I have to use my B grade load tester here, which it's okay. You know, I mean, really, you know, check our voltages here. We're reading 5.14. It doesn't have as many decimal places. It's not as much precision as the Siglin over here, but uh, you know, we're reading the same voltage across the two devices, so that's good. I do have another USB decoy over here, so we can also change this up to 9 volts. So that's something we can already see immediately, is that one device is running at 9 volts, and the other device is running at 5 volts. So we can switch these both to 9 volts, and now both devices are running at the 9 volts. And let's go ahead and load them up and see what happens. So over here, I'm going to put 5 watts on. So one of the things to check with these power supplies is a light load condition or like a, it's not even light load really. This is a five watt condition. So this thing's putting out five watts right now. And the THD number has shot up very high. So that's telling us that this thing just kind of idles down a little bit. It's just shutting the power supply down a little to, to get the THD a little lower in that idle condition. Um, but as soon as it's doing something, that number shoots way up. So that's not, not great. So I have no load on this one and I have five watts on here. Let's go ahead and take this one up to 20 watts. Seems to be doing that, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and take the other one up to 20 watts as well. So we have our USB decoy and we have two sets of wires coming off this. So I usually will have a sense line and then the main current going in here. This device doesn't have a separate sense input, so we have to just run it through here, and we have a little bit of voltage drop because of that, so the power is actually gonna be a little bit higher than this. So I'm gonna leave this at the 19.33 watts. We can see we're running at the nine volts, about 2.2 amps, lining up with this one over here. This one's a lot more precise though, so we'll leave this one running, and we can come over to this display, and we'll go ahead and take it up and see what it can do for overload. So 21 watts, 22 watts, three watts, 24 watts, and it's out. But that's one thing that's interesting. So 
this one tripped out and our other device stayed on the nine volts and is still delivering its full power. So one stayed completely on while the other one tripped on the overcurrent. So going back to that, it delivered about 23 watts on the single port. So it's, it's pretty tight tolerance, but it's really not too bad. So it'll deliver the rated 20 watts. It'll deliver 40 watts total between the two ports. And as I said, it only has the one extra voltage mode. So we got a five volt and a nine volt condition. So if you have a phone that uses a larger voltage charging mode, this is not gonna charge that. This isn't gonna charge laptops. This isn't gonna charge any uh, larger peripherals. This is strictly for lower voltage and nine volt, five volt and nine volt devices specifically. All right, so overall, this device did okay. It uh, ended up, you know, having the same kind of issues we've seen with a lot of these power adapters. And this one, the idle power consumption's on the high side, so that's not great. The THD was okay. And then we saw that the THD popped up and the efficiency, it's, it's far from the best we've seen. So this is, it's okay though. The power quality overall ended up being acceptable across the range. So just a little primer on these numbers. So the first column, we have a power usage and then we have an average power quality score. So this is its kind of average score for the device. Next two columns, we have the idle power usage and the idle power quality score. Both of these numbers really need to be taken together. So you need to look at how many, how many watts does it use and the power quality scores. Uh, so we wanna see the lowest number of watts and the highest possible power quality score. When we go and look at this compared with other devices, we can see that it's, you know, it's moving its way up the stack. It's, it's certainly not the top of the stack, but it's not the bottom either. You know, it's kind of in the middle. When we compare the idle power to the other devices though, we see that that idle consumption is on the high side. When we take a look at this on the graph, we can see it's pretty thoroughly in the middle. It's not gonna win any contests. When we take a look at the idle graph, we can see that the idle power consumption is on the high side. So not where we want it to be, although the quality of it is a little bit better. So overall, this monoprice adapter is a meh. Cost-wise, this power adapter came in around $20. Uh, the only worries we have with this is that it might not power all of your devices. So that may be a minor concern is that this is limited in some ways. So, you know, cost-wise, it's, it's compelling, you know, and the power quality is not terrible. Monoprice, 42620, generic power adapter thing. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, this device gets an overall, eh, you know, it's okay. It's not the winner, but you know, it'll do the job. It has the safety listing, barely meets the efficiency requirements, but it does. And uh, you know, it's a power adapter, it's functional. I do have a whole bunch more of these videos and I just got in a couple other smaller power adapters to check out. So these will be pretty interesting. This one's got some unique features that they would claim on it. So thanks again. And bye.